Good evening, and thank you for joining us all for this evening's June 4th Board of Education meeting. If you could all join me for a pledge to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Okay. We will start this evening with the report of the superintendent, Dr. Byrne. Thank you very much. Good evening, and thank you for joining us for our June 4th Board of Education meeting. Uh, we will shortly recognize and celebrate new nine, uh, nine newly tenured teachers and administrators. Um, and it's always a happy and celebratory occasion, one that the board and I look forward to every year. Huge congratulations to both the girls and boys varsity lacrosse teams. Uh, they are headed into the final four after they both won over Queensbury. Both schools played Queensbury, this, uh, both teams played Queensbury this past weekend. The girls will take on Fulton tomorrow, Wednesday, June 5th at 9 a.m. at SUNY Cortland. Also tomorrow, the boys play against Bayport Blue Point uh, at 6.30 p.m. in Albany. Junior Eddie Malloy competed as a member of the NISPA Section 1 Boys Golf Team this past weekend in Elmira, New York, and the team took first place overall to win the New York State Boys Golf Championship. Junior Myla, Myla Bichelia com competed on the NISPA Section 1 Girls Golf Team on June 2nd and 3rd in Rexford, New York, and finished 34th out of 109 golfers, and the Section 1 team placed second overall in the New York State Girls Golf Championship. In track news, Junior Aaron Ball placed first in the high jump at the Section 1 State Qualifier on May 30th, and will be competing at the NISPA Track and Field State Championships on June 8th. On June 2nd, Rye High School junior Rockland Boiseau finished second at the Eastern States Championship with a javelin throw of 167 feet, five inches. He will go on to compete at the New Balance Nationals June 13th through 16th. Big thank you to the organizers of the Milton Fair that went off seamlessly this past Saturday. Heard it was a wonderful success. The weather was spectacular and much fun was had by all. A brief plug for the Rye Middle School art opening, and that will be taking place tomorrow evening at the School District Central Administration Building. Art from 120 middle school students will be on display, so come on down from 5 to 6.30 to enjoy some refreshments and check out the amazing pieces from our middle schoolers. The art will be on display through spring of next year. Our Board of Education meeting on June 18th is our official end of the year meeting when we will recognize and thank our retiring parent organization and parent-teacher organization leaders. In addition, we'll have a presentation focused on athletic facilities in the school district, so I hope you'll join us then. And that concludes my report for this evening. Are we gonna roll right in? Yeah. Great, thank you. And now we will move to our rest, rest recognition of tenure recipients. Earning tenure is an achievement that reflects years of education, practice, and the thoughtful and intensive application of knowledge and skill. Tonight we are celebrating nine tenure recipients, seven teachers and two administrators. In alphabetical order, teachers followed by administrators, our tenure recipients are, and we ask that you please come up um, when I call your name, Francesca Diamenti. <laughs> Francesca came to Rye in 2020 as a technology education teacher at Rye Middle School. In addition to teaching engineering, she has been an advisor to the Middle School Technology Education Coding Club for the past four years. Francesca participated in the Project Lead the Way Computer Science for Innovators and Makers Training Program in 2022. Before coming to Rive, Francesca com completed her student teaching at New Paltz Middle School. Previously, she spent a year at the same school as a permanent substitute teacher and completed her field work there in ELA and Social Studies. 
Francesca has a BS in computer science and a master's in teaching education one to six with a concentration in math, both from SUNY New Paltz. While getting her master's, she worked for four years as a programming interner at the Benjamin Center in New Paltz, which included um, numerous coding projects in a variety of languages. She is a master of 3D coding and computer-aided design. Congratulations, Francesca. Next, we have Danielle Hulbert. Danielle came to the Rye City Schools in 2020 as a second grade leave replacement special education teacher in an integrated co-taught classroom at Milton School. In 2021, she joined the faculty as a full-time special education teacher at Milton. Prior to coming to Rye, Danielle was a sixth grade special education teacher at Tuckahoe Middle School and taught special education at the Children's Academy in Manhattan. She also worked as a leave replacement special education teacher in the Scarsdale and Tuckahoe school districts. Danielle has a BS in early childhood and childhood education from Iona College, now Iona University, and an MS in special education from CUNY Hunter College. Congratulations. Thank you. Devin Natali. Devin Natali came to the Rye Schools in 2020 as a special uh, speech pathologist at Milton School. Before coming to Rye, she was a speech language pathologist, leave replacement at the Dobbs Ferry Middle and High Schools. She previously worked in White Plains at Church Street Elementary and the High School for uh, Putnam Northern Westchester Boses in Yorktown Heights, at Greenville Elementary in Scarsdale, and as a speech language pathologist and clinical fellow at the Josephine K. Chen Speech uh, Center for Speech and Language Pathology in Greenwich and Norwalk, Connecticut. She began her career as a speech and language disabilities teacher at the Orange Arc George Robinson Preschool in Middletown, New York. Devin has a BS in communication disorders, speech language disabilities from SUNY Cortland, and an MS from the Mercy College School of Education in Teaching Literacy birth through 12th grade and an MS in Communication Disorders and Sciences from the State University at Fredonia. Congratulations, Devin. <laughs> Next, we have Lisa Rifus. Lisa first came to Rye as a leave replacement special education teacher at Rye Middle School in 2020. She joined the faculty full time in 2021. During the 2021-2020 school year, she participated in the project based learning cohort number four. She participated in the SEL committee during the 22-23 and 23-24 school years. I was already moving to 24-25 there for a second. Before coming to Rye, Lisa was a head teacher for the four-year-old pre-K program at Elmwood Day School in White Plains and a permanent building substitute at East Chester Middle School. Previously, she worked for two years as a special education teacher at Robert Bell Middle School in Chappaqua, a year at F.E. Bellows Elementary School in Rhinek, and two years at the Denton Avenue Elementary School in the Herricks Union Free School District. Lisa has a BS in art education for agency social and cultural from Penn State and an MS in special education from Hofstra. Congratulations. Lisa. <laughs> Our next person is probably the longest tenure candidate in the history of Rye, but Marie Smelzer. Mary. <laughs> Marie first came to Rye in 2013 as an AIS teacher at Osborne School. She participated in the math committee in 2017 and 18 and in the elementary math committee in 2019-20. In 2020-2021, she participated on the middle school math committee. Now the reason why Marie has been a probationer since 2013 is that she was part-time for many years and recently became full-time. 
Prior to coming to Rye, Marie was a grades three through five AIS reading and math specialist in Harrison Schools, a fifth grade teacher in the Byram Hills School District, and a fifth grade teacher in the Eagle County School District in Edwards, Colorado, and a grades three through five math specialist and three and four grade teacher in the Byram Hills School District. Marie has a BS in Business Administration from St. Michael's College, an MA in Teaching from Sacred Heart, and a Postmaster's Certification in Literacy, K-6, from Manhattanville University. Congratulations. So our, our next candidate, um, I, I'm incredibly honored to be uh, speaking about uh, Vera. So Vera Tomochko, if you can come up. And Vera is actually going to be leaving us at the end of the year, but Vera is leaving us because she's going to Ukraine to teach and be with her family. And I give her incredible credit for making that big decision and going to her home country to give back to her community during this incredibly challenging time. But Vera came to us in 2019 as a .6 music teacher at Osborne School. In 2020, she became full-time. Before coming to Rye, Vera taught at St. Vincent Ferrer High School in Manhattan, where she led the music department from 2015 to 2019. Before working in New York City, she taught music at the Mount Kisco Elementary School in Bedford, and from 2007 to 2015, she taught piano at the Rye Arts Center. Vera has a Bachelor of Arts in Music Piano Performance from the Manhattan School of Music and a Master of Arts in Music Education from Teachers College, Columbia University. And as I said, Vera is going to be making the move to Kiev to be closer to her family and uh, volunteering and teaching in her home country. So we wish her health, happiness, safety, and uh, much thanks for her service here in Rye. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Kristen Vietro. I know I saw that. So Kristen had a, a she's had double stints in Rye, and I'm, I'm thrilled to talk about this latest one. But Kristen came to Rye in 2004 as a teaching assistant at Rye Middle School, and she was here until 2006. She then spent 15 years as a math and a special education teacher at Pleasantville High School, and she returned to us here in Rye in 2021. While at Pleasantville, she taught and co-taught a wide variety of math classes and worked in the school's resource room. Before coming in at becoming an educator, she spent two years as a Social Security Administration Claims Administrator. Kristen has a BS in Mathematics with a minor in Education from Manhattan College and a Master of Professional Studies in Mathematics 5 through 12 and Special Education Mathematics 5 through 12 from Manhattanville University. Congratulations, Kristen. And we also have two administrators. Um, we only have one with us. One could not be here tonight, but I'll begin with Christina Brusich. Um, <laughs> Christina came to Rye in 2018 as a point, a, a, a point eight AIS teacher and a point two special education teacher at Osborne School. Uh, it also coincided with when we were launching co-teaching in the school district. In 2019, she moved to Milton School working half-time as an academic intervention specialist and half-time as an integrated co-teaching staff developer for the district, helping to launch co-teaching at Milton School. In June of 2020, she was appointed assistant principal at Milton School. It was a very interesting search process during the peak of COVID. And I remember the interview process in the library at Milton and all the desks uh, spread. I think at that time we were probably 12 feet apart, but it was a very interesting um, search process. 
um, and it is for that position as assistant principal that she's receiving tenure tonight. Prior to coming to Rye, she spent three years as a head teacher of third grade integrated co-teaching classroom at PS 267 Eastside Elementary School. Before that, she spent two years as a third and then first grade head teacher at PS 6, the Lily Devereaux Blake School in Manhattan. She has a BA in childhood education and an MS in special education and learning disabilities from the Hunter College School of Education. She has a master's in education and educational leadership from Teachers College Columbia University and a certificate of advanced study in school district leadership from Manhattan University, the School of Education. Congratulations, Christina. And last, while she couldn't be here this evening, I certainly wanted to recognize Suzanne Kelly Short. Suzanne joined the district in 20, uh, 2002 as an English teacher at Rye High School. From 2002 to 2014, she served as the ELA coordinator from for grades six to 12 and the senior internship coordinator. She was appointed assistant principal at the high school in 2014 and served in that role for seven years. She acted as the interim principal of Rye High School for the 2021-2022 school year and was named high school principal in January 2022. Prior to coming to Rye, Suzanne taught English at Archbishop Stepanak High School in White Plains. Suzanne has a BA in English, secondary education from SUNY Fredonia, an MA in English from CUNY Lehman College, and an advanced graduate certificate in educational leadership from SUNY Stony Brook, and she's currently um, a doctoral student uh, pursuing her next degree. So congratulations, Suzanne. So I, I do want to thank um, lots of folks brought families tonight and uh, surviving the tenure process and achieving tenure is quite um, an important step in the uh, world of an educator and that would not be possible with the love and support of families and the understanding of our children um, when we have these late nights and all of these events. So thank you all for your support of our teachers and colleagues up here tonight and congratulations to all of our tenure candidates. We're gonna take some photos first. Sarah Derman's gonna jump up. And thank you to all of our colleagues, uh, teachers from the district and administrators who are here this evening as well. We've done that in the past. Um, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are going to move into our consent agenda. 
Uh, I'd like to make a <laughs> if I could, I'd like to make a motion to pull the tenure um, piece out so we can set, vote on that separately. Perfect. Uh, do I have a second? Callie Erickson, all those in favor? That's six nothing with one absence. Uh, so on this evening's consent agenda, we are very excited to award tenure to our new tenure class of 2024, 2025. Congratulations. Can we all vote for approval? Yes. All those in Item favor? 1201. Item 1201, all those in favor? That is a glorious six to nothing with one absence. Woo. Congratulations. And while we are more than thrilled to have members of the public stay and enjoy the rest of our meeting with us, we will understand if at this time you choose to go home and celebrate <laughs> your tenure accomplishments somewhere else. <laughs> Thank you to Thank all you of you for, for your coming. work and support. It, uh, it's fantastic. continue on with our agendas. Uh, there are no presentations discussions number one. Uh, so we will move on to the hearing of the public on non-agenda items. We welcome and encourage our community members to address the board at this time. Please come to the podium, state your name, address, and if you are representing an organization. <laughs> to ensure everyone has the opportunity to speak, please limit your remarks to three minutes. The board is here to listen. The public comment period is not designed to be a discussion. So please understand that we may not respond to your comments or questions at this time. We take your comments seriously and may need more time to process and research an issue. We will ensure questions will be addressed by the appropriate staff member or possibly answered at a future board meeting. We will not entertain comments regarding individual students or district personnel as these are protected under state and federal privacy laws. Please know we take personnel concerns very seriously. On these matters, we would ask you to follow the appropriate administrative channels. As a reminder, the community may always submit written comments at any time to the board by sending those to rcsdboard at riseschools.org. Any members of the public? Seeing no members coming forward, we will move on to our consent agenda. Can I please have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Kelsey Johnson seconded by Chris Rapetto. Let's take a gander at this evening's consent agenda. Consent agenda general. Uh, the resolution for certification of budget votes, school member candidate election results. Consent Agenda Fiscal. Consent Agenda Professional Appointments. Consent Agenda Classified Appointments. Consent Agenda Pupil Personnel Services and Special Education. And Consent Agenda Curriculum Instruction and Assessment. Seeing no questions, uh, if we could have a vote to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? That would be six to nothing, uh, six zero, sorry, with one absence. <laughs> it's not a tennis score, sorry. 
<laughs> that was not how it went for me today. But enough about me. Let's talk about the consent agenda, shall we? Yes. So on this evening's consent agenda, we have an MOA for our collective bargaining agreement with our teachers, aides, and assistant, and the Board of Education. This is a five-year contract, and we believe it's a fair contract that provides the districts and the district and the employees the opportunity to serve the students of the Rye City School District while upholding the tenets of the Rye commitment. We also have accepted the certification of the budget and trustee election results. We are grateful to the community for the overwhelming support of the district budget and subsequent support of the work being done by the staff, teachers, and administrators of the district. This budget supports our students, our staff, and the community, and the board looks forward to seeing the work that will come as a result of this budget. We also accept the contract with Edutech for the 2024-2025 school year. It's not, that's hard to get out. We are going to, we also have accepted an engagement letter from Nugent and Haxler for auditing services. I'm sure that's not how they say it. <laughs> for the year ending June 30th, 2024. We also are approving the application for the Westchester Girls Ice Hockey Team, which is a merging team for the 24-25 school year. We accepted the 10-year recommendations, as we did that earlier when we pulled it out. Uh, we also have approval of speakers for the Learning Institute for our teachers on June 27th and 28th. As I always say, the school year will be done, but our teachers will keep learning. Uh, so that is this evening's consent agenda. So moving on, we have presentation and discussion number two, Mrs. Boyle, policy review, code of conduct. Yes, so we, um, in our last meeting, we discussed the changes to the Code of Conduct, which are um, fairly straightforward at this point. We will be continuing to review that over um, the next several months and looking to make some additional updates to it. But currently, this um, change is to incorporate the right commitment into the Code of Conduct and to remove um, three other elements that are already standalone policies. So we did not have any other additional questions post the other meeting. So um, if there are no further questions, we can move that forward for adoption at our next meeting. Yep. Sounds great. OK. OK, so do we will move on to information and discussion, which is the policy review. So Mrs. Boyle, I'll turn it to you once again. Yes, so, um, and, and I'll do my committee meeting update now too. We were very oh, busy. Look at you. It's a <laughs> twofer. Policy. It is a twofer. Um, we were very busy at policy and as a result we have um, three policies uh, up for information and discussion and um, also an additional policy that we repealed that was earlier in the consent agenda. So I'll, I'll group those together. First um, we'll look at uh, policy number 4772, which is graduation ceremonies, and policy 4773, which is diploma and credential, credential options for students with, with disabilities. Um, the reason I'm grouping these two together is that the, re, the, the updates that um, were incorporated into these two policies essentially were um, updates to the age at which you can provide um, students under IDEA um, schooling. So it's up to age 22. Um, this was something that, that changed earlier this year. I, maybe it was in the summer. OK. <laughs> um, and so we've been incorporating it into various policies as time has gone on. And these two were the most recent. In addition, um, 4773 um, also has an additional change, which is to reflect that um, students, all students are able to um, have, receive a career development and occupational studies commencement credential, which is also known as a CDOS. Um, so it is not only applicable to students with disabilities, it is available for, for all students. So that was an additional update to that policy. Does anyone have any questions about either one of those? No? no? Okay. Um, so the third policy um, is our employee acceptable use of technology, which is policy number 8630. The, the original um, impetus for even doing this update was a, 
addition, a different policy, which was policy number 8330, which was what we just repealed um, at the during the consent agenda, which was authorized, authorized use of school owned materials and equipment. Um, that came up as a part of our regular review of policies um, throughout uh, uh, our um, uh, big spreadsheet that we're trying to get through as many policies as possible that have not been reviewed in a while. Um, and when we started looking at it, we realized not only is it um, not a required policy, but it is also out of date. And it could also be captured within the employee acceptable use of technology. So the updates that are included within um, 8630 are uh, some of those elements that existed within 8330, um, one of which is defining out our technology systems, not just to include access to the network, but also the equipment th that is used within our buildings. So laptops, cell phones, audiovisual, all of those. Um, and then in addition, we also, uh, as part of our discussion in policy, uh, Dr. Sasson joined us to talk with us about um, the updates that we were making, and she was incorporating an additional change, which was for uh, multi-factor authentication, um, which is a, um, a state requirement in terms of cybersecurity safety. So we wanted to incorporate that into this now, since we were already making these changes based on the other policy that we're revealing, um, so that these could be ready for the uh, beginning of the school year for next year. So those are the, the main differences that you'll see highlighted in green. Any other questions? No. no looks good to me. Okay. So then we can move those forward for uh, presentation and discussion at our next meeting. Perfect. Okay. That's Excellent. It. And then that was everything you talked about in your policy meeting? Pretty much, yes. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, then therefore, we will start our board and district committee updates. Uh, there was a policy committee, as you can see. There was also a curriculum council meeting, and I had the very wonderful pleasure of subbing in for my co-board members, so that was fun to be there. So um, at Curriculum Council, there was a discussion related to the interdisciplinary units for grades six through eight. Uh, last year, it was just one grade level that did an interdisciplinary unit. This year, all three of the middle school grades completed an interdisciplinary unit, and that work will be continuing in the subsequent years. So that um, structure will remain in place and it will kind of do a, a build upon, as it were, with a focus on research skills. And so they'll be researching in sixth and then building upon that in seventh and in eighth all the way through. Um, it's also using the New York State or New York State Social Studies Enduring Issues as the anchor for the work um, and working on the understanding of sources being credible, reliable, intention, the intention of the source and the timelessness of the source. There was also a conversation related to the grade six elective courses. Currently there are two. Next year they will be breaking them into four. And so it will mirror more similarly to the seventh grade engineering, which right now they have four engineering courses, one for each quarter. quarter. And then, uh, so there will be four courses. One will be art six. One will be Words Matter, which will now take on a different, um, slightly different take to it, where there will be a study of fiction book clubs, and there will be character studies and increased uh, instruction related to reading comprehension skills. There will also be a new course, which is going to be called Skills for Success, which will look at and help the students with their executive functioning, their digital citizenship, and also address some social and emotional needs. And then finally, there will be a fourth one will be passion projects, and this is something that the social studies teachers are developing, and it will also focus on research skills. And those will be set to start in the fall of 2024, which is like 11 weeks away, we heard the other day, so. <laughs> 
seems really soon. <sighs> that 11 weeks was the facilities conversation. So well, it's it's true. we'll hear about. <laughs> it's not not 11 weeks. <laughs> and and by the time Rob is up here presenting, it will be nine weeks. That's right. <laughs> so. that, that summer, it's not that long. All right. Uh, the technology committee, uh, Mrs. Boyle. Uh, so the technology committee meeting, unfortunately, um, did not take place because there were, uh, as we know this time of year, a lot of busy people that <laughs> were unable to actually um, participate. So uh, we did not have it. Okay. Uh, were there any other meetings or information to and from the board? No? no. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I, whoa, will that, so sorry. sorry. Just, will that get rescheduled before the end of the school year? Is that the hope or? I don't believe so, okay. but I can follow up with Caitlin. Just interesting because um, there was such the conversation in the budget about the yes. work they'll be doing to, with the software review. Yep. So just interested to see how that will play out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we I can, find can maybe yeah, yeah get some sort of update on that, how, where we'll land with that for the end of the year. Thanks. It does look like there will be one last policy meeting there before is. the end of the school year. <laughs> policy ending strong. Thank you, policy committee. <laughs> Always happy with your work. Uh, okay, so other communications to and from the board? Nope, that was it. Okay. Our next and final meeting of the 23-24 school year will be on June 18th. It will be a filled fun-filled meeting. We will have our recognition for our PO and PTO presidents. We will have a conversation related to athletics, and we will also have a facilities update. Well, it's 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 the athletic it's facilities. Oh, so it's not and. It says right. athletics oh, and facilities update. We'll so it's an that. athletics. It is, it is all athletics facilities. It's a pretty comprehensive uh, look at all of the district's athletic facilities across the campuses. Okay. Fantastic. We look forward to that conversation. Okay. Seeing nothing. Are we ready to adjourn? Do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Caitlin is looking for another date. Just to let you know. oh, oh, we don't have to come back to you. That technology committee will be trying to find another date. Thanks for getting that right in under the radar. Yeah, All right. I, I wrote it down on paper. <laughs> Trish is hot Trish on is. the hot on the email. Hot on the text. Our tech people working it. <laughs> All right. So, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Chris Rapetto, <laughs> seconded by Sean Clapper. All those in favor? That is six nothing. We will see you for our last meeting in two weeks. Bye.